Linda, I work at Maker Ed. Welcome to Learning in the Making Live, where every week we'll bring you ideas and inspiration for projects you can do at home with some everyday materials. So this is our part two of our storytelling segment. Today, all you need is some paper, maybe something to write with, and whatever craft materials you have at home. So if that's some colored paper or some glue sticks, tape, and some scissors, but really it's whatever you have on hand to create what you want to create. And so we are also joined again by Arielle. Hi everybody, just to reintroduce, I'm Arielle. Last week we learned how to make characters and settings. We focused on creating our characters counter narratives. And so this time we're gonna work on putting those counter narratives and characters together to make a really great full story. Awesome. So as you mentioned, we are going to be um, creating counter narratives and a counter narrative is a narrative or story that combats or fights stereotypes. In a stereotype, as we learned last week, a stereotype is a mistaken idea or belief many people have about a thing or group that is based upon how they look on the outside or repeated stories that others may have heard. And they are often not true or only partly true. And if you weren't able to tune in last week, don't worry because you can go back and watch the video about this after this. This week, we're gonna use our characters and setting to finish our amazing stories. So first we're gonna reintroduce our characters just to get y'all acquainted. All right, so last week we learned and created a bunch of characters and these are mine. These are the ones that I have. And don't worry if you don't have these because you can always go back and watch the part one of our video. But I have four superhero characters and I call them the quad squad because quad means four and they're a squad. Dan is my main character. All of them are named after plants. So Dandelion, AKA Dan, is a Vietnamese American superhero with super strength. Rose has the abilities of shooting thorns out of her jacket and she loves science and hip hop. Sorrel and Clover are twins. They both have super speed. Their weakness is sugar because they actually are diagnosed with ADHD. So when they have sugar, they're super hyper, but they're very funny and kind and both of them are mixed race. And Mr. X is my villain. We don't really know that much about him. We just know that he turns colorful spaces white and gray and super boring. What are the characters that you have? Oh, Linda, I just want to say before I jump into mine that your characters are so diverse and pretty. Um, so just to reintroduce my camera, uh, my characters, I'm going to switch my camera real quick to the document camera. All right. So I have four characters, just like Linda. I have um, Sasha and Teresa, who are sisters. Sasha's super ability is x-ray vision, and her weakness is lead, like lead rooms, not dark rooms. Her counter narrative is that she is deaf and mixed. Um, and her family member, of course, is Teresa. The languages that she speaks are English and American Sign Language um, because she has to be able to communicate with her hands on occasion. Uh, her gender is a girl. And the cool fact about her is that she's the best Mario Kart player ever. Um, her sister, Teresa, her abilities are supersonic sound and her weakness is noisy places. Um, her counter narrative is also that she's mixed. Her family member is Sasha and she can also speak both English and American Sign Language because she always wants to be able to communicate with her sister. Um, her fun fact is that she can beat a Rubik's Cube. We've got our third character who is called Mr. Rook. He's a cute little cat. His ability is that he's a super kitty and his weakness is of course catnip. Um, he is a cat and his tool is his paws and his family is Teresa and Sasha, and languages, of course, are meowish. And a little fun fact about him is that he can see ghosts, like he doesn't really know what to do about it. So he just sort of walks by them, like all other cats. And then our final character, it's kind of the bad guy, but only a little bit, is Mr. Panini. Mr. Panini's super ability is super smell, and his weakness, of course, is Panini's. He doesn't really have a counter narrative. Um, we don't know anything about his family, and we only know that he speaks English. 
Uh, one thing that we do know about him though is that he likes pastrami. I love all of these details about your characters. It really gives them an extra layer of depth. So now that we have these characters though, how do we turn them into an actual story? Well, we're gonna need to create a plot. So a plot is what happens in your story, right? It's basically just everything. Um, it has a beginning, a middle, an end, and it has a problem and then a solution. Super cool. So I know that we created some worksheets that could help us think through all of those elements of a plot. So, if, but if you don't have a printer at home, it's okay. You can just use a re regular sheet of paper like I'm going to be using. And this is the worksheet. Um, these can be downloaded on MakerEd if you want. And again, if you don't want to, you can just use whatever piece of paper you have around. Okay, so last week we thought of many different identity markers for our characters. How do we introduce this into our story? Because you have such amazing details and I'm not really sure how we include that in a short bit, a short animation or story story. That's a really good question. The best way is to show, for instance, my characters, Sasha and Teresa are mixed. I show that with their hairstyles. Oh, I see. So, for example, Dan is Vietnamese American, and one of the ways that I can show that is that she just speaks Vietnamese with her dad. I know growing up for me, it was super embarrassing to speak Vietnamese in public because I didn't think that that was something that was cool. But now I'm really glad that I didn't give it up because speaking another language is super cool. I wanna make sure that I include that in my story so that everyone knows that it's super normal and super cool. Yeah, no, I think that that's really, really cool that you can speak multiple languages. It's fantastic. And just to reiterate, counter narratives, and I'll just switch to my screen here. Counter narratives can uh, be shown in multiple ways. You can show it in scene or you can show it with visual details. So just keep that in mind when you're working on your own story. And the great thing when we are creating our own universe is that we get to choose how to reveal the, reveal the parts and details about our characters, right? We choose how we tell their story. So our characters can be revealed and developed over time, just like real people. Wow, I have so many ideas. All right, so let's get started on our plot. We need to think what is the main problem in our story because that's going to drive our story. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and start with the worksheet and that's a great, great point because that's the first question we have here. What is the main problem in our story? I'm gonna go ahead and list off mine. The main problem is that the sisters lose their ball in the neighbor's yard. Now, I can go ahead and start. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at these questions in the side. You don't have to answer these questions. You can even add more. They're just there to help prompt you. So where does your story start and how is the problem introduced? So. Sometimes I know the problem of the story before I know where to start. It's okay to write things out of order if you need to. I know that where we start is that girls are in the backyard playing with a ball. In backyard with ball. And then they toss the ball off screen. And one of them signs, oh no, I think it went into Mr. Panini's yard. And then Sasha signs in return, we'll never get it back. We're gonna have to look for Mr. Rook. And then we're in the middle. And so I can go ahead and ask myself the questions, what happens in the middle of the story? How does the problem affect your hero? Well, Mr. Rook shows up and they all head into the forest. they get a little bit lost and they have to use their superpowers to get out. 
And when they get out, well, how does your story end? And how does your hero resolve the problem? Here's the thing, when they get out, they end up in Mr. Panini's yard. They see their ball and they're like, oh, we gotta go get it. We're in the right yard. See ball? And they go and they sneak towards the ball and they're trying to be super, super top secret and silent about it. And then Mr. Panini comes out and he's like, hey, you. And they're like, oh no, we're in so much trouble. So they think they're in trouble. And then all that happens is Mr. Panini smiles at them and says, hey, aren't you the girls next door? I have all of these toys that you've thrown over on my edge of the yard that I keep forgetting to bring back to you. Would you like your toys back? And they're like, yeah. So they thought Mr. Panini was kind of strange and mysterious, but actually he was just a nice old guy that liked paninis. What, what a plot twist. Because I thought Mr. Panini was going to be such a bummer and he turned out to be much nicer than I thought he was going to be. So, well, I love that plot twist. Um, here's my plot. I just quickly jotted mine down on a sheet of paper. And remember that I am going to be doing a TikTok video, so, or that's what I am going to be doing a TikTok video. I revealed it. Um, so mine is really short. So my plot, what happens is our plot. My problem is that Mr. X gentrified a neighborhood and made it super boring. That's how he gets his power. So in the beginning of my story, the squad is, they're hanging out. Dan's dad calls and invites everyone to dinner, but they need to go save the neighborhood. In the middle, the squad arrives at the neighborhood and use their powers to make it beautiful. And this weakens Mr. X because he gets his powers from gentrifying neighborhoods and making them super boring. And in the end, they celebrate by having a dance party because it's always great to bring in joy and laughter. Something that you might want to think about in your creating your story is what kind of message do you want your story to be telling? So some things I want people to take away from my story is that plans, art, and music make neighborhoods really beautiful. And people with different backgrounds can be great friends. That difference is really good. And so now that we have a general framework of our story, right, we have a general framework uh, or idea of our plot and how our story is going to be told, it's time to decide how we want to tell our stories and that requires a media. So there are many different ways you can tell your story. I'm going to share a screen with you so that you can see the just a few ways or examples that you can choose from. So I have a mini slide here for you. One of the ways that you can tell a story is through oral storytelling. This has a long tradition in many cultures and especially indigenous cultures. That's when people are sharing their stories just by speaking and passing it on. You can also tell your story through animation. This is how cartoons are made. You can create a comic to tell your story or maybe narrative writing. I know all of you who are in school have definitely wrote some narrative stories. Or maybe you wanna create a drama or play. These are stories that are meant to be acted, acted out. So Ariel, what media storytelling are you gonna be using? I'm gonna be using animation, which I'm really excited about. I'm gonna be using a program called I Stop Motion and I've made a few puppets to help me. I'm also going to be using puppets and I told you all that I was going to be using TikTok. I recently just downloaded TikTok and I'm very excited about the format. That's super cool. I'm really excited. I enjoy TikTok a lot and I love hearing stories on TikTok. So in our Learning in the Making Lives Thought Motion Animation video, we talked about storyboards. And if you do a project with images, it's always helpful to do a storyboard. What's a storyboard though? A storyboard is a little comic that has basic images of what scenes you are going to have in your story. So it doesn't need to be super detailed. Here is mine. I know mine is going to have four major scenes. First, the squad is going to be hanging out. That's when Dan's dad calls. And then they go and decide to 
rescue the neighborhood. Then my next scene is going to be the neighborhood that has been turned all white and gray. Then they use their powers to make the neighborhood really beautiful and reclaim it. And that way they weaken Mr. X. And then they have a dance party. So those are my four major scenes in my story. I really like that. Just it's so clear and I get such a good sense of like the full story on one piece of paper. So I think I actually made a storyboard myself. So I'll just go ahead and show you it, but it's not as concise as yours. This is only one page I have they're playing catch and I use stick figures because stick figures are a really amazing way to quickly jot out an idea. The first draft's job is only to exist. So playing catch and then they lose the ball and then Mr. Rook appears and then they head into the forest. And I have page one of however many because there could be so many pages, maybe up to 30. Some films have more than 200 pages worth of storyboards. So don't feel bad if you have too many. 200 pages oh my goodness i only have four squares but you know they aren't making theirs on tiktok okay so we have these storyboards how do we turn these storyboards into actual stories that's a really good question i mean and it changes depending on what medium you've decided to tell it in so you want to keep your medium in mind as you're writing your story because I chose animation, I'm thinking a lot about what the screen is gonna look like as I write. You can animate with anything. I chose to make puppets, and then I just take one picture at a time using my storyboard as kind of a reference and kind of a suggestion. It's, it's not too important if you go off track with it, it's okay, because really the most important thing is to have fun with it. Tell me about your process, Linda. Since mine is going to be a TikTok video, I know it can only be one minute. That means that I need to tell my story really quickly and the action needs to move quickly. It can't be that detailed as, I, as if I were writing a narrative story. And there's going to be a lot of voiceover. So most of the time, my characters are going to be the ones that are speaking and having dialogue. So next, now that we know kind of the process that we're going to take in telling our stories, we need to create different props or a set for our stories. What props did you need to make for yours? Because you're making an animation. Ah, I made a few. I'm mostly focused on puppets. Here, I'll show you. Um, to start, I made a little stencil for myself with pencil. And then I held up pieces of paper against the window and would trace my stencil. And then I would go ahead and cut it out on cardstock or cereal, like a cereal box material, something a little stiff, and I would make joints with it. I use something called Sew on Snaps, or you can use something called Brads. You probably use Brads in school. This is a really big photo of them and they kind of wing out, but they're actually really small. They're usually only this big, okay. And so I have my two characters and it's really cool because now that they're finished, I can make clothing and just sort of tape it or glue it on top and then they can move. This is their startled expression, by the way. They actually have pupils that I have elsewhere. But yeah, they're totally animatable and it's really, really fun. That's so cool. I created um, a diorama of my set so that I can use it as a backdrop for my video. I made these puppets last week. So if you're interested in how to make these little popsicle puppets, just go and review our video from last week. But this week, I had to create a brand new set for my storytelling. So first I just started off with an empty box and then I filled it with some paper in the background and then I had to build some 3D buildings. The way I did that was I just started with some plain white paper. I know that a rectangle has four sides. So first I tried just folding four equal sides, right? I folded four equal sides because I'm like, well, rectangles have four sides. If I just folded four different sides, it would create a 3D rectangle, but it was really hard to attach. It was really hard to attach it. So what I ended up doing was I folded a little lip first. This is going to be where I tape 
or glue my buildings together. And then I folded four sides. So one, two, and now I'm going to create two more. Here I have one, two, three, four, and this extra lip that I created. That way, when I just fold it over, look at here. It has this little flap here that I can attach it to. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to glue it. So I'm going to add glue to this part of the lip that I folded. And then I'm going to attach this side at the end of the lip and fold the lip over and glue it down. And then when I pop it open, I have a 3D rectangle. And so with this, I drew on my windows. I drew on some windows. And then as I was creating my TikTok video and I was changing it, I would pull it out of the scene and then I would add more details to it. But this is how I created my 3D buildings. I also created the sunflower and again, I created a little bit of a lip so that I can use that lip to attach to my box and it just gets taped here. And same for this bush, I created some areas for it to be attached so I can just attach it to the box. Wow, it's so detailed. I love how much work you put into making it 3D so that it like pops out and feels more real. And, you know, I feel like it's interesting because I feel like we both spent a lot of time on our, on our props. And I just want to remind everybody that you can spend as much or as little time on your stuff as you want. Don't feel bad if somebody's doing something different. They're working at their own pace for their story and you're working at your pace for your story. Right, everyone has a different way to tell their story. And this is just some ways to give you ideas of how to get started. And I'm seeing that Donna uh, back home is saying that snaps are a great idea. So they got some ideas from you already. Um, so now that you kind of know our process and how we created some of our props, I want to show you my finished project. Remember that this is a TikTok video and I can only tell the story in one minute. So be very gentle with your judgment. And so I'm going to share my screen with you again. And here is my video. It's called, um, it's called Quad Squad Reclaims the Neighborhood. Bring, bring, hello, ba hả? No, chưa ăn. Okay, một chút qua. Hey squad, that was my dad. He invited us over for dinner later. After we, of course, rescued the neighborhood. Mr. X totally gentrified a neighborhood. We need to go and rescue it. Let's go, I know the way. No, look at what happened here. We've got to fix it. What do we do? I know, squad power. Mr. X can't stop us. That's right. We got awesome magic. Let's do this. Nailed it. I've got next. Yes. My turn. Look at that. I'm for some flower power. Yay. Check it out. Look, squad, we're doing such a great job, but it's missing something. Oh, I know. It needed some lights. It's perfect. Dance party. Heck yes. So that was my story. I hope you all liked it. Um, I really started ending, running out of time at the end. And so the, the scene of the dance party couldn't be as long as I wanted it to be. But now I know. Every director has to cut out some piece that they love from their story, but I really enjoyed it. And I mean, my, my clip that's coming up is really small, so no worries. All right, so now I am going to be sharing Ariel's 
which is just part of your story, right? Because animating yeah. takes a lot of time. <laughs> I love it. I think it's so cute. Your characters are adorable. And so sometimes too, you'll have technical difficulties with the way your story will show and don't be too worried about that kind of thing. <laughs> I know, because I know um, before we put Ariel's clip onto the slides, it was really smooth. So I'm going to vouch that it was very smooth animation <laughs> until we put it onto the slide and it didn't show up the same way. But I- storytelling. <laughs> I think your characters are so cute and I love that you used animation to be able to tell your story. Um, and we have two very different stories and I'm really excited what everyone back home comes up with your, and what kind of worlds that you're creating. So remember that this um, is all about storytelling and storytelling could be a very powerful tool to change the world. Right? When we are telling positive stories and messages around people, that it changes the way people see others. So we want to make sure that you share what you make with us. So share your project with us at Maker Ed. Um, it could be at Maker Ed with hashtag Maker Ed at home or hashtag storytelling on Twitter or Instagram, we would love to share what you made and inspire others to do more making at home. Yeah, and you can also find our project guides for this activity in both English and Spanish, as well as more resources and inspiration that you can do at home in the link in the description below. You can also find it on our Maker Ed website. So if you can't find it in the description below, just go to our Maker Ed website. And if you want more ideas of hands-on projects you can do at home, you can visit also the link below, or you can go to our Maker Ed website or our YouTube channel where we have a ton of videos. I think this is now our 12th video. So we have tons of different projects that you can be doing at home. So Learning in the Making Live is going on a quick summer break. Join us again with a new host and activities. As always, we'll be learning in the making. Thank you for joining Family Maker Camp.